My name is Roger West, and I'm a member of Holy Trinity Elliott Lake, and I'm a student in the Licensed Lay Worship Leadership Program. I will be leading our worship service this morning. Welcome. I welcome you to this time of worship for Sunday, August 30th, 2020. Whether this is your first time joining us, or whether you're a recurring visitor, or whether you're a regular, we welcome you. And we're glad to have you join us in this time of worship. We hope that our time together will be one of finding strength, healing, and inspiration for your soul and yourself. So we invite you into this place and time of acceptance and light to worship and know that you are beloved and held in the divine embrace just as you are. We acknowledge the territory. For thousands of years, First Nations people have walked this land. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their spirituality. We are gathered on the traditional lands of the Mississauga and Serpent River people and acknowledge their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. May we live with respect on this land and live in peace with its people. This morning's call to worship. It is good to be together, God, on these screens with these people, together listening for your voice, united by your spirit. In this time of worship, tell us about the kingdom, the kingdom of kindness, so that we can seek it. Show us your justice. We want to walk with you, humbly, closely, daily. We light this candle as a visual reminder of Jesus' promise to us and his presence in our lives and our world. Quoting from Matthew 18, verse 20, And when two or three of you are together, because of me, you can be sure that I'll be there. Let us take a moment to pray this day. God of farm and city, God of parks, and highways, God of beaches and flowing waters, God of all places, God of all people. We open ourselves to your spirit and pray that you will make this time of worship a time of peace, a time of learning, a time of reflection, a time of forgiveness and repentance, a time of joy. Let us know your presence and your deep caring for us. We pray in the spirit and love of Christ. Amen. Our first text this morning is taken from the Old Testament. And it's taken from Exodus 3, verse 1 to 15. And I'm using the message, which is a paraphrased Bible, which gives us a chance to hear these words in a new way, so that we might understand in a new way. Moses was shepherding the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the west end of the wilderness and came to the mountain of God, Horeb. The angel of God appeared to him in the flames of a blazing bush. He looked. The bush was blazing away, but it was not consumed. It did not burn up. Moses said, What's going on here? I can't believe this. Amazing. Why doesn't that bush burn up? God saw that he had stopped and looked. God called him from out of the bush, Moses, Moses. He said, yes, I'm right here. God said, don't come any closer. 
closer. Remove your sandals from your feet. You are standing on holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, afraid to look at God. God said, I've taken a good long look at the affliction of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cries for deliverance from their slave masters. I know all about their pain. And now I have come down to help them, pry them loose from the grip of Egypt, get them out of that country, and bring them to a good land with wide open spaces, a land lush with milk and honey, the lands of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. The Israelite cry for help has come to me, and I've seen for myself how cruelly they're being treated by the Egyptians. It's time for you to go back. I'm sending you to the Pharaoh to bring my people, the people of Israel, out of Egypt. Moses answered God, But why me? What makes you think that I could ever go to the Pharaoh and lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? I'll be with you, God said, and this will be proof that I am the one who sent you. When you have brought my people out of Egypt, you will worship God right here at this very mountain, in this place. Then Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the people of Israel, and I tell them, The God of your fathers sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? What do I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. Tell the people of Israel, I am sent me to you. God continued with Moses, This is what you're to say to the Israelites. God, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob sent me to you. This has always been my name, and this is how I always will be known. Our second reading is taken from the New Testament, and it's taken from Matthew. I'm sorry, from Luke chapter 13, verses 6 to 9. And I'm reading this version from the New Standard Revised Version. And referring to Jesus, then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree and still I find none. Cut it down! Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, then you can cut it down. Thanks be to God for this chance to hear his word. Amen. My message today is entitled, Our Burning Bushes. I owe the broad strokes of this message to the writings of Father Michael Marsh, an Episcopal priest, and I am thankful for his inspiration and his writings. My neighbor and former English teacher, Wendell Cam, would be very happy today. He would be even happier if I could claim to remember the entire poem from memory. I want to start by quoting from Elizabeth Barrett Browning's poem, Aurora Lay. After I recite the memory work fragment, which is all I have left, I want to explore some what-if questions. 
I want us to hear our texts in new ways so that we can risk some thinking new and different ideas to push against the usual interpretations and stretch ourselves and hear the word today for today's times, for our life in this time. So here is the memory work fragment remembered some 50 years later. Earth so crammed with heaven and every common bush afire with God. So here is what I wonder about. The what ifs. What if burning bushes are actually a dime a dozen? Maybe the burning bush is not unique to Moses. The rabbis of old say that others pass by the bush as it was burning, but only Moses turned aside. What if? What if the miracle of the burning bush isn't that the bush is burning and not being consumed, but that Moses turned aside? Maybe turning aside to see this thing is the real miracle of the story. What if the burning bush is a part of each of our lives? Maybe the only question is whether we will turn aside. What if every burning bush is a call asking for and awaiting a response from us? Maybe the caller of this call, God, not only wants, but needs a response from Moses and from you and from me. I suspect some of you have already figured out where I'm going with this. I think there are burning bushes in each of our lives and throughout our lives. The question is not whether there is a burning bush in our life, but whether we will turn aside and respond to the call being made upon us. Burning bushes are those circumstances or events that interrupt life and grab our attention. They are not part of our plan. They take us by surprise. In fact, we may be gobsmacked. They stop us in our tracks and cause us to turn aside. We take a second look. Sometimes we are brought up short, speechless, at a loss for words. Burning bushes come to us as an overflow, an excess, sometimes in positive welcome ways, and other times not. Regardless of how it comes to us, burning bush shatters the horizon of our expectations. That's a bit of an odd phrase, let me see if I can explain it to you. We all live within a horizon of expectation. It's the part of life that can reasonably be planned on and counted on. It holds a future that is mostly predictable, foreseeable. We mostly know what tomorrow will bring. Our expectations will likely be met. It's just another Monday after all. But we don't know what lies for one We don't know what lies beyond the horizon and at the horizon. Within our horizon, life is only relatively stable, which means it can also be unstable. There is a risk and a potential for instability, despite our expectations. For something to shatter the horizon, something we could not see coming. Moses never thought it possible for a bush to be on fire, but not be burned up. He never expected or planned on being the one to bring God's people out of Egypt. Those were beyond his horizon of expectation. In each of our lives, there are experiences that shatter our horizon of expectation. 
They are events, conversations, and words. Happenings that were unplanned, unexpected, unforeseeable. And they always ask us for a response. They are those times that leave us weeping and ask, why? They are those experiences when the excess is just too great. And we have only tears of joy. There are those times that we can't wait to share someone, share with someone what has happened and say, not in my wildest dreams could I have imagined or guessed that this would be my life. They are also those times when we shake our head in disbelief and say, no, that's not possible. It can't be. And sometimes we throw up our hands and we say, God only knows. When, and has any of this happened in your life? What have been burning bushes for you in your life? These burning bushes don't reveal God to be a supreme being, a superhero, or the big guy in the sky. Instead, it reveals God to be more like a call, a solicitation, an asking, and insistence. In burning bush experiences, God calls more than God does. The doing and accomplishing are for us to do. God says to Moses in this morning's text, I have observed the misery of my people. I have heard their cry. I know their suffering. And I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians. Now it sounds like we're getting somewhere. God is coming to rescue God's people. But listen to what God says next. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of the land of Egypt. Let me repeat that. I have come down to deliver them, God says. So come, I will send you, God says to Moses. God is going to deliver God's people by sending Moses. Moses is to give existence to the call for deliverance. Moses is to make real and enact God's desire for his people. What if that's how God is working in our lives, too? You remember I mentioned the old rabbis who say that others paused by the burning bush but did not turn aside. What if they, too, were to have given existence to God's call, God's insistence that the Israelites be freed from Egypt? I wonder when you and I have not turned aside? When have we failed or refused to respond to the call on our lives? The burning bush is one of call and response. Something is being called for in the name of God. And I can't help but believe that call and response is also the story of our lives. Something is being asked of us in the name of God. The burning bush experience does not happen apart from our daily life or in spite of our everyday life. That's what Moses was doing when it happened, his everyday life. He was keeping the flock of his father-in-law he was doing ordinary and routine things, routine things of life. He was doing the same things he did the day before, the week before, and the month before. Burning bushes may 
show up as we keep our flocks of routine in everyday life. Marriage, parenting, grandparenting, work, running errands, during worship, in reading or watching the news, or in vacuuming the house or washing the car. In what ways is the horizon of your expectation being shattered today, right now? It could be as ordinary as a tomato plant that is not bearing fruit. Or as tragic as the loss of life because of the current pandemic, which the World Health Organization now says is 827,246 lives. And it's everything in between those two. What is interrupting, disrupting, erupting in your life today? What's asking for you to respond? What is being called for? How will you respond? Now, this is where I get stuck. My father used to say, the rubber meets the road. Where I get stuck is on my response. What's the right response? I want to get it right, don't you? But what if there isn't just one right answer? What if we can't know for sure? What if the right response is whatever brings life forth? More life, new life. And what if that looks different in each of our lives and to each of us? Here's why I ask. I have a picture of a barren tree behind me today, and we'll assume it is a fig tree for our purposes. Thinking back to our second lesson today, the vineyard owner in our second lesson responds to the barren fig tree by wanting to cut it down. The gardener responds by wanting to dig around and fertilize the tree. The text, however, does not tell us who is right or what happens. What if both are right? What if being right isn't even the measure. And for Moses? How does Moses know he'll get it right? He doesn't. He doesn't know any more than we do. There will, however, be a sign. The sign, God says, will come after the people have been delivered. Not before. It's as if God is saying, you will look back on all of this and see that I was there all along. And isn't that a pretty accurate description of life? We all live our lives in forward, uncertain and unknown. But we only begin to understand and make sense of it in retrospect. What if there are no guarantees and the best, the most that we can do is to respond hoping against hope, loving and faithing our way forward. What if that's how we approach every burning bush in our life? And what if we saw every common bush a fire with God? Amen. We'll now take up our offering. God of compassion, sometimes we are reluctant to follow your divine authority and to place our entire trust in you. We feel more secure trusting in our own ability and our own strength. Thank you for this moment in our worship service when we are reminded that your unwavering, steadfast love engulfs us like a mother's gentle caress and bless our gifts and we who give them. Trusting in your heavenly grace we pray. Amen. Today's
his prayer for the people. Lord of hope, we come to you this day. We have followed many paths, and one of hope leads to this doorway, this place, this time. Enter our hearts this day as we share our joys and concerns in prayer and in the actions and service that follow. We lift before you situations and people who are in need. in need of your healing mercies, in need of your peace. Help us to be those who would bring this peace to them. Let us be in prayer, lifting our concerns to God. Please, in this time of silence, share with us your concerns this morning and with your God. We respond, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. As our lives have encountered difficulties and concerns, so too are we blessed with great joys. We celebrate these moments of happiness and wonder with each other, lifting up joys and celebrations in this congregation, in this morning, in this time of worship. Again, I'll ask that, as I remain silent, you lift up these celebrations and thank God for them. We respond, Lord, in your love, hear our prayer and our praise. Lord, bless all of those whom we have named before you in our hearts and with our voices. Touch each life with the blessings of peace and mercy. Give us strength and empower us for the ministries of reconciliation, for it is in your name that we pray. Amen. And now, as Jesus taught his disciples, we will recite the Lord's Prayer. I will read a contemporary version but please feel free to recite whatever version you are comfortable with and has meaning in your life. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus has called you and placed his trust in you. Go into this world, bearing the words of hope and healing. Reach out to others in compassion. For it is Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name, that you are sent out to serve.